Hey, what's up? This video will show you everything that you need to know about how to install mods for 7 Days to Die. There are some timestamps below if you want to skip ahead or reference back in the future, but otherwise, let's begin. To start things off, we're going to be looking at the 7 Days to Die mod launcher. You can just type this into Google to find the link to it, and there will also be a link in the description down below. Once you're at the website, just download the file that you need, and once you have the zipped file, you're going to have to extract the contents somewhere onto your hard drive. Open up that folder, and then double click on the executable file, and it should look something like this when it loads up. This should be your main view, and you'll see some options here on the left. The first option will be to install an overhaul mod such as Undead Legacy, Darkness Falls, Age of Oblivion, and several others. If you click on this, it will give you an entire list of all the compatible overhaul mods that are preloaded into the mod launcher. So just select the one that you're looking for, in this case Darkness Falls, and press install. And now you'll have two options. The first will be to copy from local and the other will be to download from Steam. Now basically what this means is that the installer is going to make an entire copy of your 7 Days to Die game specifically for the overhaul mod. Now you can choose to download a fresh copy from Steam if you've perhaps been tinkering around with the game files on your own or you can just copy your own local 7 Days to Die folder as is and then Darkness Falls will be installed into that or whichever mod you've chosen. So in my case, I'm going to copy from local. I'm going to browse to the location on my hard drive that contains the 7 Days to Die folder that I already have installed from Steam. And I'm going to say start copy and it's going to start making a copy of that 7 Days to Die version that I have. And it's also going to download and install Darkness Falls for me. This process does take a few minutes and you'll get some interesting things to read while you're waiting. And when it's done, you'll get this view right here and you'll see a lot of options to, for example, read the description of the mod or any recent updates. You can join the community, donate, see the website or Twitter. You can update the mod if there's an update available. You can play the mod. There's a modlets button. There's some options to delete files and backup saves. But I'm going to go into modlets first. And you can see that in addition to the total overhaul mod, Darkness Falls, there are some modlets, which are just essentially smaller mods that are included with the overhaul. Some are made by Kane and some are made by others. For example, B-Dub, who made a vehicle mod. You can toggle these on or off, or you can add additional mods. And to do that, you're going to go over to the left here. This dropdown can show you Alpha 20 modlets or any version prior to Alpha 20 in case you're playing an older version of the game. And then all you have to do is click refresh modlets and it'll take a minute to pull in all of the available modlets that you can uh, add into your game. So now you'll see this long list here on the left and you can shop through. It doesn't give you a great preview or much information at all about the modlets. So you might have to do some research on a third party website to uh, figure out which ones that you want or to learn more about them. So let's say you want to add a lawnmower into your Darkness Falls playthrough. So you'll just select the lawnmower modlet here and click install it will download that for you and it'll put it into the appropriate folder and you can see it here on the right you can disable or delete that if you need to and otherwise you're just ready to play and so here you are at the main darkness falls menu ready to start your new playthrough so that's basically it for the mod launcher i'll show you how to install just smaller modlets with the mod launcher in a little bit but i want to show you how to install a total overhaul mod without using the mod launcher in case you want a little bit more manual control and i would advise that you be familiar with how to do this manually as there are probably some cases where things will not be compatible or things will not be updated and so you want to be able to do things on your own so the place you want to be is on your hard drive wherever your seven days to die game is loaded you can see my pathway right here and you're going to go to the seven days to die main folder right click and just copy or just right click and drag and say copy here this will make a complete copy of the whole game onto your hard drive that you can tinker with as you will now you'll see in my folder here these are my other steam games but i have a copy of seven days to die for undead legacy and another one for darkness falls 2.4 right here and so i always have those mods available for me if i ever want to go back and play those or i can just use vanilla seven days to die and i don't have to Go through the process of installing and uninstalling they're just always there so i'm going to name this one apocalypse now and then we're going to search for apocalypse now in google and we're going to go to one of two places the one number one go-to place for mods for seven days to die is seven days to die mods.com the second place that i would recommend using to get your mods would be nexusmods.com both of them have a very large supply of good quality mods and you can get pretty much all of the main mods there that I know of as well. So in this case, I'm at 7 Days to Die Mods. I'll click on the download link 
It will download in the lower left corner and I'll just open that up when it's done and I'll extract the contents of that zip file directly into the mods. Now, Apocalypse Now, huge conversion mod. It uses a lot of other mods and modlets, and so you'll see there's a ton of mods that are gonna be here in the mods folder. And I'll say it right now, if you open up your seven days to die folder and there's not a mods folder, in there by default, which there is not by default a mods folder in there, you'll need to make one. Just right click, add new folder. You're gonna title it mods with a capital M. It is case sensitive as far as I know. So make sure that the mods folder is there and then all of your mods will just be copied in here. You do have to make sure that the right folder is in here. You, you wouldn't want to drag in the zip file in here. You wanna make sure that these are actually the mod folders. And if you ever have a question whether you have the right folder to put in the mods folder, you should just double click on that folder and immediately inside there should be some other folders, but also there will be a modinfo.xml. If the modinfo.xml is immediately inside that first folder, then you have the right folder that needs to be in the mods folder. So now that everything's copied in, you wanna load up Apocalypse Now. You're just gonna click on this seven days to die executable file that's inside the Apocalypse Now version, this copy that you've made. You do not want to enter the game through Steam anymore because if you go through Steam, it'll just load up your default seven days to die. So if you'll probably want to right click on this and create a shortcut and maybe put that on your desktop somewhere and label it Apocalypse Now so that you know how to get into the game at a later time. So the game boots up and yes, you are in Apocalypse Now and you're ready to start your first playthrough there. Okay, so what if you don't want to have a major overhaul installed and you just want like a couple smaller modlets? One option that you have is still to create a backup version of the game. Now I do recommend this just to make a copy have it separate so that you can always go back and, for example, play some multiplayer and you just don't have to fuss around with moving mods in and out of the mod folder in order to get back to like the default state of the game. So the mod launcher gives you the option to do that. You can just uh, click on install my mods instead of install overhaul and this will still produce a new copy for you. Same process as before. You can label it to your heart's content and copy from local or download from Steam. Again, you're going to browse to your seven days to die default folder, select that and you'll just click start copy. So give that a minute and you're, you should be all set. This should look familiar. It's basically the same window, but with a little bit less flair than we had with Darkness Falls. You can then go to modlets. And again, if you don't have any modlets showing up, you'll just hit the refresh modlets button. So then you can just shop through the available modlets again. Let's say today you wanna to play with the 15 slot tool belt from Kane. So you search for that, you click on it, you press install, you give that a second to load in. You load up the game by clicking the play button right here and it should bring you right into this version of the game that you have this copy that has that modlet active and then you'll open up your world or you can start a new world. And once you get in, you can just check and make sure that yes, you have this nice big 15 slot hotbar. Everything appears to be working here. Let's load back out. So what if again, you don't want to use the mod launcher or you just want to learn how to install modlets without using the mod launcher? Well, it's very similar to how you installed the total overhaul version. Now in the previous example, I made a copy of the seven days to die game, but let's say you just want to play with something really simple like Kane's lockable inventory slots. So you just make sure you have that mod downloaded, you unpack that file from a zip folder, you have that folder, you drag it into your seven days to die mods folder. Now in this case, I'm just using my default seven days to die, like my master copy of seven days to die. I put it directly into that mods folder, copy it in, I click on the executable, load the game up. In this case, if you have your mods installed into the default, seven days to die folder that's connected to your Steam account, you can just load the game through Steam and your mods will be loaded up. So I'll load up a new world here and then we'll just double check here in the inventory that indeed, yes, I can lock my inventory slots now. It's a very handy mod, hard to play without once you've played with it once or twice and you're good, let's boot out. And I wanna show you real quick, there is an alternative location that you can put mods in. So if I load up my app data folder, now I think by default, this is not visible in Windows, but it's located in your user folder. If you have trouble finding it, you just go come down to the search menu here and type percent app data percent, hit enter and it should load up your app data folder. You'll then go to roaming seven days to die. And here you'll see things like your generated worlds, all of the prefabs that are on your hard drive, your screenshots, all of your save games. And there is now a mods folder here. And so 
as an alternative to putting your mods in the seven days to die folder, you can also put your mods here. Although I would not recommend mixing and matching, I would pick one or the other. And in my personal opinion, it's just more convenient to do it the old way, which is keeping it directly in the seven days to die folder. Okay, so, so far we've gone through how to use the mod launcher to install overhaul mods, how to install overhaul mods without the mod launcher, how to install modlets with the mod launcher, and how to install modlets without the mod launcher. There's one more thing that I wanna go over with you, and that's this kind of unique mod. So the same guy that created the mod launcher also creates his own sort of kind of overhaul mod, or at the very least, you could just call it like a mod collection. And it's right here. If you type in Sferi mods, or if you just type in zero S core, you can find this mod page right here to go ahead and download this whole package of mods that he has. This is probably like the most underrated package unknown package of mods. I haven't seen anyone else using these. And probably I would say because the interface is kind of confusing and there's no like really good readme and uh, there's no like video tutorial. Anyway, you're gonna load it up and zero S core. This is like a sort of mod that activates other mods. So you'll see other mods like Darkness Falls, for example, uses S core to enhance Darkness Falls and to activate some of the features that are present within it but S core has some functionality on its own that I wanna kinda of go over. So this is basically just like installing a total overhaul mod. I would recommend having a clean install of Seven Days to Die, make a fresh copy of that. And then you'll open up the zip file and again, just take all of the folders that you want, all of the mods that you want out of this package and drag them into your mods folder. I can't even begin to tell you what all of them do. I haven't had enough time to kinda of go through and dissect them all but I'll leave it up to you to just explore and do some testing. But what I will say is that if you want some of the core features of S core, you're gonna definitely need the S core mod. And this is where things get pretty complicated. I think this is quite a barrier to people using this, but if you pay attention, you should get the hang of this. So you're gonna open up the S core mod folder you're gonna see a config folder. Now, the config folder in Seven Days to Die, it's where all of the XML files go, which are like the easy files to mod. Like you can mod all kinds of things, but if you just wanna like get Notepad out and do some modding, the config folder is like the one to do it in. So anyway, you go into the config folder, you're gonna see this blocks.xml file, and you're gonna right click that and open it with whatever text editing software that you use. So I have that pulled up here. And what I wanna point out is that everything in red are like values that you can change to kind of to modify things. Everything in green is like a description and explanation of what that line does. And so when you read through this, you realize that nothing is really activated by default in this mod, it's all off. And so you have to go into the file and make some changes to like customize it, to activate all of the features that you want to play with. So if you take some time and you read through this, you'll see a couple of really, really interesting features. The first is this read from containers thing, which is basically storage broadcasting. If you've ever played Undead Legacy, you should know that all of the storage boxes and chests and things like that can sort of upload their contents to the cloud. <laughs> and then all of your workstations can pull from the cloud instead of you having to have all of the recipe items in your inventory ready to go. It just pulls it out of whatever storage is nearby. And so you can tinker with all of those values, for example, the range that it will pull from storages, and you can just activate this feature basically for vanilla, and it feels good, it works good, and I highly recommend giving it a try. It's a huge quality of life mod that I think there's been mention of for being added to Alpha 21, but you know, who knows how long away we are from that. The second big feature that I love in S Core is fire management. So there's a feature that allows you to set everything on fire <laughs> and it feels like, just like the storage broadcasting, it feels great, it works well, it is a bit of a hit on performance, but anyway, come down to fire management and where it says fire enable, you're gonna change that from false to true. You can tinker around with these other settings to see if you can like get better performance out of it. Like for example, you can make it spread less quickly and do less damage or less smoke or whatever you want. But anyway, make sure that you save, close out, and then open up the executable for the version of the game for the folder that you've been working in. Immediately grab some Molotovs, we're gonna need those. We'll grab a workbench and some boxes and some wood. Set down the workbench, set down the storage, put the wood in the storage, check the workbench, and yes, I'm able to make 
thousands of shapes. Even though there's no wood in my inventory, the workbench is pulling the wood out of the storage box that's right next to it. And just to confirm, I cancel it. It puts the wood in my inventory, so I take it from my inventory, put it back in the box, and I can make the wood frames again. It's too easy, then I'm gonna throw a Molotov at it. You can see that the wooden storage box on the left actually catches on fire. The workbench does not, and you can see periodically the health will degrade on the storage box until it's destroyed, and uh, it'll be gone for good. There's no way to put the fire out unless you download some other mods that kind of give you fire extinguishers and stuff like that, but I think it's pretty cool just to play with like fire that you can't stop, and so we're going to go over to this building here. I'm going to throw 20 Molotovs or so at it and catch the whole thing on fire. And I'm going to take a walk inside and just show you what it looks like from inside. You can definitely be caught on fire, so can the zombies. And then I'll just time lapse here for a second and show you the whole house burning down to nothing. Now, worth mentioning that this generates a ton of heat, so if you set a building on fire like this, you can definitely expect maybe five or so screamers to come in. It's a mixture of the fire itself and also the blocks collapsing, which generates a lot of heat as well. That is something that can be tinkered with in the settings so that you don't get such a screamer mess afterward. There are some other options. You'll have to go through those on your own. There are things such as cave networks that you can add into random world gen so that you get worlds with these massive labyrinth style caves. You can also get food spoilage so that if you have food in your inventory, it will just go bad like after a certain amount of time. <laughs> and there's much, much more in this mod as well. But anyway, my friends and fellow survivors, that'll have to do it for today. I hope that you found this information helpful. And if you did, please leave it a like and stay tuned for more content just like this. My name is Temriki and I hope this video has earned your subscription. Thank you for watching and goodbye.